This lesson is for FST Lesson 10.5 on Binomial Probabilities. Let's do quick practice and review on expanding a binomial and assuming that this is H for heads and T for tails if we were tossing four coins. Because the exponent is a 4, we would grab row 4 of Pascal's triangle and the coefficients there are 1, 4, 6, 4, and 1. Then I would grab the first term in my binomial, in this case h, and I'd raise it to the fourth, and then I would descend the exponents until all the exponents have been exhausted. Keep in mind that here we've got h to the 1, and the last term we technically have h to the 0, but h to the 0 is 1, so we don't need to write that one. But you're more than welcome to write that if you prefer. And then on the second part of the binomial, we put that one on the far right, raising that to the 4, and then those descend as you move to the left. And then we just stick plus signs in between all the different terms. And then when you simplify here, you really don't need the ones any longer. So I'm just going to get rid of those. And then that's my polynomial. Keep in mind that this polynomial represents all of the outcomes that you would get if you listed the outcomes for tossing four coins. There's one outcome where all four heads are the same. There would be four outcomes with one tails and three heads. The reason for that is because the tails, the single coin that has tails, could be in one of four positions. It could be the first coin, second coin, third coin, or the fourth. So that's why there's four outcomes with three heads, one tails, and so on. So if we went ahead and listed them all, we'd end up with all the different possibilities. Clearly, it's much nicer and much, much cleaner to figure out the outcomes using the binomial expansion. Uh, it gets us our information a lot faster and a lot easier, and we don't have to keep track of where the different positions are for the different things we're looking at. So we've talked about the probability of tossing four coins and what those outcomes are. In this lesson, Lesson 10.5, we're going to think of some of the same kind of problems, but instead of counting heads and tails, we switch and refer to those outcomes simply by success and failure. Binomial experiments have five characteristics that students need to pay attention to. First of all, they will typically ask you for or tell you about how many trials there will be. And those are just the repeated things that are occurring in the situation. The number of trials needs to be fixed, so it can't be changing during the problem. Within each trial, there are only two possible outcomes. Two here is the key because it is binomial. Binomial always means two. And we're going to refer to those two trials as successes and failures. So know that what would lend itself real nicely to a binomial situation is any time you have two outcomes, like the heads and tails problem we just looked at, uh, gender questions like uh, how many children in a family are boys versus girls, that type of thing. And for the fourth characteristic here, the probability of success has to be the same in each trial. And then the trials have to be independent. Mostly you'll see this last one listed specifically. The other ones are kind of assumed or given to you. So what we've done next here is given you the actual list of all the outcomes, very similar to what we did up above with the heads and the tails. So here they say, you know, there's if F is one of your outcomes or failure, there would be no successes in that case, and that could occur one time out of the total number of successes. So here's all the outcomes listed. You can tell how many of each type there are, mostly by looking and also by knowing that you're in row four of the triangle. On your calculator today, when we get to our formula that we're going to be learning, there are two commands that you may or may not be using, and those are on the TI Inspire calculator. One of them is called the binomial PDF, and one of them is called the binomial CDF. I will have instructions for you in just a minute, but first let's learn what the formula is for binomial situations. Binomial probability is calculated with three pieces of information. You're going to do a combination of the number of trials and the number of successes. Normally when we do a combination we do n choose r. We're switching the r to a different letter now because that letter is going to stand for the number of successes, so we give it a different letter name. Then you're going to multiply that combination by the probability of success. That gets raised to whatever the number of successes are, so these two have to be the same number. And then the complement to that is going to be the probability of failure. Since these two are complementary of each other, 
they should add up to 1. So here's an alternate version of the same equation. You could say p to the k and then q to the n minus k or just 1 minus p to the n minus k. The 1 minus p and q represent the same thing. It's the complement of the probability of success. The exponent here on the q or the probability of failure, I want to clarify what that means. Basically the two exponents that you have here for p and q together need to combine to make whatever n is. So if your n is a 7 and your k is a 3, the exponent here would have to be 4 because 3 plus 4 would make the 7. So just make sure the exponents add up to n. So let's go ahead and put this formula into practice, or excuse me, let's list it out in words and then we'll try it. So we just looked at the symbols for the formula. Now let's actually kind of say what the formula is for and list out all the different pieces. So this expression of n choose k times the probability of success to the k times the q or the probability of failure to the n minus k gives you the probability of getting exactly k successes in n number of trials of a binomial experiment in which the probability of success on each trial is the letter p. So that's what that formula tells you. I wouldn't necessarily say here that you need to memorize this, but you do need to memorize the formula and all the different parts. And so this statement really nicely does that for you. So let's go ahead and try it with a specific question. Now unfortunately we're going to talk about sickness in this question. Cancer affects all of us, either personally or with friends and family. So this is a pretty typical type of question here that all of us have dealt with. Suppose that the probability for a certain cancer to remain in remission for at least one year after chemo is 0.7 for all patients with that cancer. Find the probability that each uh, that exactly two out of the four patients currently being monitored are able to keep the cancer in remission for at least one year after chemo. So we're going to talk about this being a binomial situation because you're either going to remain in remission or you won't. So the number of trials here is how many patients, so that would be four. We're looking for two out of the four to remain in remission. The probability of success, they usually give it to you outright or they give you information in which you can calculate it. In this case it's 0.7. That 0.7 needs to get raised to whatever the k is, so in this case a 2. We have to calculate the complement to 0.7, so hopefully you know how to do that. 1 minus 0 0.7 is 0 0.3. And then we just subtract 4 minus 2 to get the other exponent. Now you can type that in as is on your calculator. You can tell it to do the combination command. On the TI Inspire, you would do menu, probability, and then you would choose combination. And it'll say NCR, and then you'll have to fill in the N and the R. So in this case, you'd fill in 4 and 2. Then you would type in 0.7 to the 2 and 0.3 to the 2. So that's one option for how to type it in, and it should give you the number, I think, 0.26, I believe. You could also, if you know Pascal's triangle and you know that you're in row 4, 4 choose 2, hopefully you know that number already, and if you knew it, you could just say that instead of doing all of this business at the beginning, you could just do 6 times 0.7 squared times 0.3 squared. So that would allow you to skip a step here if you knew what the combination value was. You can also use a new command on your calculator called the binomial PDF. And so let's talk about that a little bit. Uh, first I'm just going to have you type in the numbers here, binomial PDF, and it'll ask you for the n first, so in this case the 4, then it'll ask you for the p or the probability of success, in this case the 7, then it'll ask you for an x value, but know that we would call that the k, so in this case it would be a 2. And in all three cases you'll get the number of 0.26 or 26%. Let's talk about that binomial PDF command for a moment. And I've got that here for you. First let's talk about the PDF. There is a CDF as well, we'll get to that one later. The PDF stands for Probability Distribution Function. Again, it's going to ask you for an N, a P, and then actually an X, but we're going to refer to that as the K. There's a CDF as well, and we'll come back and talk about that one when we get there. 
to get to this command, you would do menu, probability, and then you'd go down to distributions on the TI Inspire. On the TI 83 and 84, there is a distribution command, and I believe the way to get there is second and then the VARS button. So let's go back to our problem that we were doing, our example. There's a follow-up question. Find the probability that two or three patients are able to sustain remission for at least one year. So now they're asking us for two or three. We already know the two is 0.26. To figure out the three, we're going to do four, choose three now. So the number of successes has changed. The probability of success has not, and neither has its complement, but the complement's exponent is going to change now to a 1. So again, you can type that in using one of the three methods given to you above. When you do that, you will add the two outcomes together, and I believe you get here a 0.41, so your final answer then would be about 0.67 or about 67 percent. Let's try one more example and then I'm going to have you try one independently. This one's straight out of the FST textbook, example 2, page 647. Suppose a quiz has 10 multiple choice questions, each with five choices. If a student guesses randomly on every question, what is the probability the student will get seven or more correct? Right away here we need to focus on what they're talking about here, each with five choices. So if you think about Having the choices usually being letters, A, B, C, D, and because there's five, we would need to include E. So the chances of you guessing, we have to figure out the probability of that. So if you have five choices and you're going to guess on one of them, probability there would then be one out of five, or you could say as a decimal 20% or 0.2. There are 10 multiple choice questions, so that's our number of trials. We're trying to get seven or more. So we're going to have to write this out multiple times. Make sure you have a lot of space here. So we're going to start with seven successes for 0.2 or one-fifth. We're going to raise to the seven. Complement to that is 0.8, of course. And so this one would get raised to the, that's right, it would get raised to the three because the seven and the three have to make the 10. Then we would add to that eight, nine, and 10 successes. So I'm going to write out the rest of these and then I'm going to show you an alternate way of calculating rather than having to do it four times. So here's all of your outcomes added together. Here's the 7, here's the 8, here's the 9, and then I apologize the 10 is a little bit scrunched here at the end. That's 10 choose 10 times 0.2 to the 10 times 0.8 to the 0. Now rather than having to type this in four times we can use the binomial CDF command. So let's just write that down and then I'll show you a little bit more about that particular command. The binomial CDF will ask you for a little bit more information. We're going to fill in the N, just like always, number of trials, the probability of success, and then it's going to ask you for which two numbers you want it to add up. So we want it to add from 7 up to 10. So let's do a generalization here for that command for your notes. So the binomial CDF gives you the cumulative or the sum of whatever you tell it to add up. So it's the cumulative distribution function, meaning it's going to add up whatever you tell it. So the commands for this one are still N and P as the first two, and then it's going to ask you for the lower and the upper. Basically, they're going to ask you, I'm going to add from what to what. And so you just need to tell it which ones. Notice that we could have used the CDF function on part B of the question that we did. We could have used binomial CDF here and told it to add from 2 to 3, and it would have done that for us. But since we already had the two one, the, the one with two successes already figured out, we only had to calculate one more, and then we just added them ourselves. So this will be a lot faster than having to type in all four pieces, much faster to use the command on the calculator. And when you type this one in, you should get point three zeros, and then eight, six, four. Keep in mind that that's a decimal number. If you want to change it to a percentage, you'd percentage, you would move the decimal point two places. I'd like you to try one on your own. Read it, pause the video, and give it a try, and then I'll reveal the answer shortly. Three different ways to do this question. You could use the binomial PDF because you're only looking for one particular outcome. In all three cases, you should get about 16%.